Well, hello there and welcome back my friends to another episode of The Lawn Care Night. Today we're going to be talking about starter fertilizer being our first regular application of the year as well as some Humic 12 from the next line. Little blanket weed control because I've got a Kalinga problem and I'll talk a little bit about soil savvy as well as giving you some general updates on the channel. Welcome to spring here in Florida. Those of you up north, you can pay attention too because starter fur is starter fur and it's all gonna help you. And with that, let's get on out into the lawn. Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So here in um, Central South, I don't know, this is where I live, this part of Florida, it is spring, like spring has completely sprung. I mean, you can see behind me, look how green this little beauty is already. It's uh, early morning, so the sun is not cooperating, but look at that. Now I'm gonna link in the description below to the video that I did last week because I did get down my first application of Prodiamine. <laughs> There's a bee on there. Look at this dude. He's on my dead cat. <laughs> so I do think the little bit of potash that was in the uh, granular Prodiamine definitely helped out a little bit, gave me a little bit of a color pop, but this lawn hasn't been treated with anything since Christmas. I put down Melorganite at five pounds per thousand on Christmas day, and that's the last time I've put anything in here. And you can see the color is looking really good. So this is kind of gonna be my first, I don't know what would I call it, you know, spring kind of cleanup deal here. Spring cleanups down here in the south are not the same as you guys that are cleaning up after major snowfall, but we still have some things to do here. Because I haven't been out here quite as often, I've got a lot of weeds growing, I've got a lot of little things going on in the beds, just some things that I need to attend to, as well as my palm trees that you guys know I've been working with. So with that, let's go take a look at today's task list so you can kind of see what's going on in the video. Okay, so I've got a lot of things that I need to accomplish today, and it's always a good idea to set yourself up for success, especially like on a weekend where your time is limited. So I went ahead and made a list. And the other thing this just does, you know, again, I, I encourage you guys to keep a lawn journal. I know I joke about that, but I'm actually serious about it too, because it just kind of lets you see what you've done for the lawn, keeps your history. Uh, you know, it's just a nice thing to know. And sometimes you'll wonder, hey, I tried something at certain times, it worked, it didn't work. So either way, here's what we're doing today. The first thing we gotta do, of course, is enjoy the mow, and this will be the first major mowing of the year, meaning that the lawn is gonna need to start being mowed every single week now. So, of course, edge, weed whack, blow, and then starter fur. Yeah, of course we're gonna do some starter fur. So, first app of the season, and here we go with the Lesco. I got this at the Home Depot. So there you go, so there's my NPK ratios, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's a very good mix for a starter fur. And let's just do some quick calculations here. It says that the bag covers 10,000 square feet, and it's a 50 pound bag, see that? So for those of you that are smart, what's our application rate? If this covers 10,000 square feet and it's a 50 pound bag, that's right. Five pounds per 1,000 square feet. That's right, my friends. Our application rate is five pounds per 1,000 square feet. You'll also remember that last week's granular at Prodiamine was also a five pounds per thousand application rate. So that means that the setting that you used, if you hit it good, you should also be able to hit it pretty good on this. This will be a little bit different prill size. Thanks, Matt Martin, for teaching me that term prill size or granular size, as I would say. This is a little bit different size, but it's gonna be a lot closer than things like Melorganite. So again, good to keep some consistency in the program. I'm not gonna take credit and tell you that I did it and planned it this way on purpose, but the fact that it came out that way, it's just that good old lawn care nut luck. By the way, you'll see these are my professional show notes. You see that that points right to the starter for, and then next we're gonna do a blanket weed control with Dismiss, uh, because I've got some massive Kalinga problems. And uh, so we're gonna need to take care of that as well as the other broadleaf that's in here. Then we're gonna do some Humic 12 right there, part of, our, part of our next soil treatment program. I'm gonna be talking a lot about this. I've gotta shoot a whole video on the BioStem pack, uh, which I'll link in the description below. Yeah, I'm gonna be pimping that out, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And then next, the palms, the palms. I'm, you're gonna see them, they're all beat up in this video. I don't know if I'm gonna get to those today, but I've definitely gotta do some pruning and then maybe a little soil treatment there. So yeah, I need a cigar. And then I wanna talk about the back lawn real quick because speaking of these products here, just real fast, I just wanna show you something real quick. Um, I am treating the birds of paradise in the back using the RGS. 
Uh, here we go, back lawn. So the back lawn, I'm gonna take you and show you right now, but let me show you what it got. On January of 2018, it got my custom Juju mix. I'll link in the description below to that video. Then on February 3rd, I gave it some Flora Green 402. Now this is something that I'm using on the Birds of Paradise. This is really that's something that's in the tree shrub and palm pack, but I decided to spray it on the back lawn uh, at a pretty heavy rate just to see what it would do. And then the other thing that I did is last week I put prodiamine in the back and you saw that, I'll link again to that video if you want to see it. But I did not use the 007 there, I used a liquid or a water soluble powder granule, whatever they call it. So there was no, um, uh, there was no macro value in it, so nothing there. Uh, I did get the prodiamine and then I gave it an RGS app at 3 ounces per gallon. So let's go take a look at that back lawn. It's had no fur, it did not get the Christmas Milo app. It's had absolutely no fur. It got just Milo last year one time in the fall. That's it. Let's go take a look at it. Some of you will remember this is a, an experiment over here. This is going to be all Bermuda. I'm going to turn this to Bermuda this year. Don't know when we're going to get to that, but anyway, that's what this is over here. And then that's uh, damaged Alexander. Giving you guys just, you know, you guys are all around the lawn with me all the time, so. Look at that. I would say that that color is pretty darn good. Now it's not cut, it needs to be cut, so probably look, won't look quite that good once I cut it, but we'll see. So we're gonna run this section of the lawn this year. I've decided I was gonna do a light, light Milo schedule, but actually I'm not gonna do that at all. I'm only gonna run the NXT products back here. I'm gonna mix them all up. I'm gonna use all different ones from all the different packs, uh, but I'm not actually gonna put down anything other than those this year. And then if I need weed control or you know herbicides, things like that, I'll use it. But other than that, absolutely no macro type fur. Let's just see what we can get. The reason I wanna try that is, is because one of the advantages that I have here in this part of Florida is that we get lightning storms pretty much every afternoon and lightning releases a lot of natural nitrogen, which will come down and turn the lawn green on its own. So I'm gonna see if we can take advantage and be the most natural that we can, which is to strengthen our soil, optimize our soil, so we can use only the natural nitrogen provided by Mother Nature. That'd be pretty cool, don't you think? And speaking of uh, the back lawn there and not using any macro fertilizers or anything back there this year, uh, I also do want to mention my friends Soil Savvy. As you know, they've been a great partner to the channel. If you do want to get a soil test, I recommend them because their soil test is a little bit different than some of the ones that you'll get from other labs or from university tests and whatever. And that is their test measures macro micronutrients that are available right now to the root. It's a really cool test, but it'll show you what's actually available to you now, which is really important because of the tests that I want to do with the lightning. Uh, and not putting anything back there. I've got a few of these tests lined up to use this year, so we're gonna do have a little fun with that and also see what kind of readings we get as we optimize our soil with the next products. So with that, let's go ahead and get our first soil test of the year. Now again, I've showed you what's gone down and there was some in in this one here with the flora green, uh, but that was done so long ago, nitrogen doesn't last that long in the soil. So, and we haven't really had any thunderstorms here. So let, this would be a decent first reading, again, knowing that this is what we've done so far. So I've taken samples from three spots there, up there, and over there. And what's interesting is anything up there that's closer, obviously, to where the pool was made, much sandier. There's a lot of rocks up in there and stuff, which makes sense from the construction. Back here, a little bit more kind of black dirt and topsoil kind of thing. So we have a very interesting dynamic just here in the backyard. And you can even see how that slopes down right there for drainage. That's probably all fill that was just brought in up there, and that's why it's a different composition. Just real quick, I don't know where I'm gonna fit this in, but <laughs> look at this. So uh, these came, 
these came directly from a factory in Hong Kong actually really cool these people reached out to me um, I really like them they're nice but they, they sent me all these I got these for patreon giveaways so if you're a patreon subscriber these are gonna get given out as well as to uh, my folks in my coaching so I'm gonna do a complete you know like overview of these because they're cool and I could use them because I got all that RGS stuff over there now so you know I mean when somebody reaches out and is like hey can we give you some stuff I'm like yeah only if you can give it to my peoples too so with that, let's go ahead now and enjoy our mo. And you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna film some of this, but really, I mean, again, this is my first kind of real mo of the season. Uh, got the got the time master ready to go over there. Can you see that? I don't know. Okay, I'll finish mowing. Look at how pretty that looks. Oh, that's gorgeous. So pretty. Sometimes I end up talking like Keith Kalfas. So I have no idea why. Anyway, if you were in the north, you could use the same stuff. Um, the fact that it's starter fertilizer uh, just means that it's got all three elements. That's really what we're caring about here. So don't get hung up on the word starter. You just want to get something that's got all three elements. Unless you're in an area that's phosphorus free, there are some phosphorus free areas where you can only use this type of fertilizer in new seed or sod or something like that. But for the most part, that's what you're looking for. Now, some quick math, because I know you guys love the crazy math. So 50 pound bag covers 10,000 square feet, five pounds per thousand. So what's our end rate? Five times six, 0 0.80. So five times 16, it's 16% 16 nitrogen. So at five pounds per thousand, we're gonna get 0 0.80 or just over three quarter pound in per thousand square feet. And actually that rate would be pretty good if you were in the north as well for cool season. I don't mind you putting down a little more than three quarter pound, but for the most part, you guys want to stay right at that three quarter pound. So you might want to back this off just a little bit, but that'd be a good rate for you guys in the springtime in the cool season lawns as well. Pretty, pretty. better that time not quite as out of shape a little bit though Whew, two weeks in a row baby okay now we're gonna do our blanket spray and this is gonna have humic 12 which is our first application of the next products here for the year I've actually I've actually already done an RGS treatment but again I explained to you that to me RGS is just something you put in anytime you do an app but this is a regular early season app that I recommend the humic 12 we're gonna get that soil really popping here early now because of that it's a blanket app I also do have a lot of Kalinga nut sedge coming in here pretty much everywhere so I need to blanket that and then I got some broadleaf throughout so it's going to be okay to go ahead and do a post-emergent herbicide blanket application here so in this case I can mix the humic and I can mix the uh, weed control in the same tank mix it makes sense get them both done at the same time so because I'm targeting Kalinga Um, I've got a couple choices blindside which I'm not going to use today um, only because I'm running low and it's a little hardcore you can see the sulfentra zone that's in this is really what I'm looking for and it's 60% it also has methyl fear on methyl in it which is this you can get this by itself this is a great little weed control very inexpensive um, but I can get a similar with this here dismiss and dismiss is also sulfentra zone but you're gonna see that it's 39% so it's a little bit less of a concentration so it's not going to be quite as harsh now I could spike in some MSM if I wanted to but I don't have any weeds to worry about um, that are not going to be gotten with the dismiss and again it's the sulfentra zone that we want because that's what's going to get the Kalinga or the Nutsedge and pretty much everything else now the mix right here I don't know if you're going to be able to see it uh, I've got warm season grass here uh, as you can see and so therefore I'm going with the high rate 0.275 ounces per thousand square feet or ounces per gallon um, now that's a very small measurement and that's why this is nice to give you this tip and pour here focus 
So you can see what's nice about this is they give you this nice, I don't know, I don't call this a tip and pour. I don't know what you actually call that. But anyway, so you can fill it up and there is my mark 0.275 and I've got a two gallon sprayer. So I'm going to do that twice. And then for the Humic 12, so we're going to have to look at that. This is, uh, we've got a lot of leeway here with this one and, um, you know, you're not going to overdo it. However, we don't want to be wasteful. So I've got a 10,000 square foot lawn too. So I want to make sure that I have enough for the entire season. So here we go. Here's our helpful information sheet. And we can see here turf um, apply as an additive to a regular fertilization program, which our fertilization, we just did granular. So you could add this to your liquid program. That's what it's saying. But either way, three to nine ounces per thousand square feet. And you got to make sure you have enough sufficient water, seven to one. So we're going to be fine. We're going to go at the very top end though. And so we're going to go with a nine ounce per gallon rate today. So nine ounces per gallon. So I've got a two gallon tank over there. So that means I'm going to put 18 ounces into that for each fill. And then uh, because I've got 10,000 square feet, I'm going to do five fills. I like the uh, larger opening, easier access.